Hello, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics. Today we are going to be looking at what an expression is, what it means to evaluate an expression, then we're going to take a look at some examples of evaluating expressions and end with a real world example. If any of that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. So first, what is an expression? An expression is a math sentence with at least two numbers and at least one operation symbol like add, subtract, multiply, or divide. A lot of times these expressions also involve variables, which are the type of expressions we're going to be taking a look at today. We call these algebraic expressions. So your next question might be, okay, what's the difference between an expression and an equation? So with an equation, equate, there's going to be an equal sign where an expression is just that math sentence like I talked about. So we're not going to be able to solve this. We're not going to be able to solve for x or for a or for whatever your variable is. We're only going to be able to either simplify or evaluate. And today we're going to be talking about evaluate. So what does it mean by evaluate an expression? This is where they are going to give you the value of the variable. Because like I said before, it's not an equation so we can't solve for our variable. So to evaluate, we're basically going to just plug in. They are telling us the value of the variable, right? If we have a plus b, you can't add two letters together. But if those letters are variables, which means they represent a number, and they say a is three and b is five, we now know a plus b is gonna get us eight. So same thing here, they're going to tell us the value of our variable and we're going to plug that in and simplify. Let's take a look at some examples to see how that works. All right, so as you can see here, I have my four examples that we're gonna go over. So the first one is worded, you know, the typical way you'll see it, evaluate 2x plus five for x equals three. Now, if we were given just 2x plus five, we can't do anything, right? We don't know what that equals. We can't solve for x. All we can do is plug in if we know what x is. So we know x equals 3, so we're going to rewrite our equation, 2, and instead of x, we're going to replace it with what it equals, 3. Remember, we don't actually have letters in math. We have variables which represent numbers. That x was just there to represent 3. Now we can go ahead and solve using our order of operations, which if you need a reminder on that, I do have a video on that. So go ahead and take a look at that. But we should know we're going to start with multiplication first, which when we have two numbers next to each other, that is not 23. That is 2 times 3, which would get us 6. After we multiply, then we add 6 plus 5 would get us 11. That would be our answer. Moving on to number two, you can see this time I have two variables. I have y and I also have z. But that's okay because they tell us y equals 12 and z equals 7. So we're going to just plug in. Instead of y, I'm going to have 12 over 2 minus, and instead of z, I'm going to have 7. So again, order of operations, we're going to start with divide, which we should know a fraction bar really just means divide, which 12 divided by 2 would get us 6 minus the 7. So 6 minus 7 would get us negative 1. So our solution for number 2 is negative 1. Moving down here to number 3, you can see again, we have two variables, a and b. So a different way to word it, what is the value of negative a plus 3b if a is negative 2 and b is 4? So just like we did before, we are going to plug in for a and plug in for b. Now notice, when I go to plug in for a, they want negative a, which if a is negative 2, a negative a would be a negative negative 2, right? which we should know a double negative really just turns into a big plus sign. So that's really a positive 2 plus 3 
times B, which they told us is four. From here, we're gonna do order of operations, which tells us to multiply first. Three times four is going to get us 12. And then remember, we said a negative, negative two would get us a positive two. So two plus 12 would get us our answer of 14. In our fourth example, you'll notice we have two parts. They want us to evaluate this expression for x equals 3, and then again for x equals negative 6. So we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to plug in first with 3 to get a, and then we'll plug in negative 6 to get b. Notice this time we have x in two different places. That's fine. That just means we need to plug it in in both of those spots. So instead of x squared, we're going to have 3 squared. Instead of plus 2 times x, we're going to have 2 times 3, because in this one we want x to equal 3, minus 1. Then we're going to use our order of operations, which tells us to do exponents first. 3 squared is 9. Then we are going to do our multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. Don't forget those to bring those symbols down, those operation symbols down with you. And we're just going to add and subtract from left to right. So 9 plus 6 would get us 15 minus 1 will get us 14. Now for B, we're going to do the same exact thing, except for instead of 3, instead of X, we're going to have negative 6. Now we need to be careful um, with the squared part. When we write that, we want X squared. We want negative 6 squared. All right, we don't want this. Right, you may know this already, but the difference is this bottom one here is saying 6 squared, which is 36. Tap on that negative sign. Where this first one is saying, let's take negative 6 times itself. Negative 6 times negative 6, which is what we want. We're going to continue plugging in. So plus 2 instead of x, or instead of 3, again, we're going to have negative 6 minus 1. And now we can go ahead and simplify it out like we did before, starting with our exponents. Which remember, this is telling us negative 6 times itself, negative 6 times negative 6, gets us a positive 36, plus 2 times negative 6 gets us negative 12, minus 1. All right, then left to right. 36 plus a negative 12, or 36 minus 12, would get us 24, minus 1, right, just bringing that down, would get us 23. Right, so notice I can have the same expression and plug in different variables to get different answers. When x was 3, my solution was 14. When x was negative 6, my solution was 23. Let's take a look at how we can use that for a real world example. All right, so we have our real world problem here, which tells us it costs $10 to get into an amusement park, plus an additional $1.50 for every ride you go on. All right, so it's not just a straight up cost per ride, there's also that fee of getting in. We're gonna use our evaluating expressions to come up with an expression and then evaluate for A, which is six rides, and B, which is 12 rides. So first, let's take a look at this problem and think of an expression we could come up with. All right, so first of all, we know it costs $10. So $10 is gonna be the first part of my expression. We know after that $10, we also have to pay an additional $1.50 per ride. So in addition, right, it tells us to add $1.50, but we're not just adding $1.50, we're adding $1.50 for every ride. All right, so let's say I went on five rides, we'd have to take that $1.50 times five. If I went on 10 rides, we'd have to take that $1.50 times 10. 20 rides times 20. 
times the amount of rides we have. So $1.50 R. Now I can use that expression and just plug in for the amount of rides. All right, I want six rides. I'm gonna have $10 plus my $1.50. And instead of R or rides, we're gonna have six. Same thing down here for B. Instead of six, we would have 12. So coming up with that expression makes it nice and easy to then evaluate for any value you want after that. So we're gonna go ahead and work this out starting with multiplication. $1.50 times six is $9 plus the $10 it takes to get in would cost us a total of 19. Now, a lot of times you would think, okay, well, it's $19 for six rides, so for 12, it should be double. However, that is not correct because it's not just the cost per ride that plus $10 is not going to make it proportional. So let's take a look at what our answer would be for 12 rides. So same thing, we're gonna have our $10 plus our $1.50 per ride and this time we're replacing our rides with 12. So yes, I can double the amount of ride cost because that part is proportional, right? $1.50 times six should be half the amount $1.50 times 12 is, right? So if it was $9 for six, for 12, it should be 18, right? My answer is not gonna just be 19 times two. We're gonna have to also add that 10 So that it is $28. All right, not, I just took that by two, we'd get 38, All right? Not proportional because of that additional $10 it costs just to get in. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what lesson you would like to see next. I am going to be making my next video on simplifying expressions. So problems like this. This time they do not give us the value of the expression, but they just tell us to simplify. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Thanks and we'll see you next time.